Hi, this is Len Furman, the Sports Time Traveler, bringing you a real fun article today that I enjoyed writing. It's titled, Starting at Power Pitcher, Dave DeBusher. The subtitle is, The Power Forward of the Knicks Championship Basketball Teams Started on the Mound for the White Sox 60 Years Ago Yesterday. I start out with a note from the Sports Time Traveler. For all the New York Mets fans who can't get enough updates on the 1973 Mets as we're now in mid-August, I want to let you know that for the rest of the season, when I'm not writing an article here about the Mets, I will be posting updates each day on my website on the, new, on the 1973 Mets updates page. So bookmark the site, thesportstimetraveler.com, and when you get there, on the menu at the top of the page, there's a menu item that says 1973 Mets updates. Click there and you'll see daily updates on the New York Mets for the rest of the season. And now, the background on today's article on Dave DeBusher. It starts out with a subheading, Dave DeBusher. When I was a little kid and I was a Knicks fan, I thought his name was Dave DeButcher. My mispronunciation was fitting because DeButcher played with a controlled ferocity inside. He also had a sweet touch from far outside that would have made him a great power forward even in today's game in 2023. I previously wrote about Dave DeButcher in the spring when he made a beastly play on a rebound against Wilt Chamberlain late in Game 4 of the 1973 NBA Finals that was instrumental in the Knicks taking a commanding 3-1 to lead en route to their second NBA title. You can read about that article in the link I've provided in the written version of the article here. That article was titled, The DeBusher Debacle. Now, for those who don't know much about Dave DeBusher, he is a Hall of Fame basketball player. At 22 years old, he was the fourth pick in the 1962 NBA draft. In three prior seasons at the University of Detroit, he averaged 25 points and 19 rebounds. But even for those who knew about him on the court, did you know that Dave DeBusher was nearly as good on the mound? And the next subheading here is DeBusher D Baseball. DeBusher was a standout baseball player in college. At age 21, right after graduating, he was signed by the Chicago White Sox and went straight to the major leagues. He played in his first professional baseball game for the White Sox on April 22, 1962 in Kansas City. And in one inning, he allowed no hits and no earned runs. He had six more appearances all one or two inning stints over the next six weeks in 1962, and his ERA stood at 1.64. Then on June 10th, he was called in to pitch in the eighth inning against the Twins. He gave up two walks and a home run to, Har to Harmon Killebrew, and he was yanked from the game without getting an out. At that point, the White Sox sent him to their single-A team in Savannah, to get experience as a starting pitcher. In Savannah, DeBusher started 14 games and racked up a 10-1 record with a 2.49 ERA. The White Sox brought him back up to the majors in September, and in four more appearances, covering a total of seven innings, he allowed no hits. The next subheading is DeBusher decides to go back to basketball. Shortly after the baseball season ended in 1962, DeBusher started the 1962-63 NBA season for the Detroit Pistons. He averaged 13 points, 9 rebounds, and 3 assists while playing in all 80 games. In Game 3 of the Pistons' first-round playoff series against the St. Louis Hawks, DeBusher recorded his first 2020 game in the pros, as he scored 23 points and pulled down 26 rebounds in Detroit's only win of the series. DeBusher determined to be a two-sport pro. With the Pistons out of the playoffs before the end of March, 
DeBusher went right back to baseball and without a break joined the White Sox for the start of the 1963 baseball season. In his first nine appearances, he had a 2.74 ERA. That earned him a role as a spot starter on the Chicago White Sox pitching staff. His first start in the majors was on June 23rd, 1963, and he let up just two runs in seven innings, but lost the game two to nothing. Over the next six weeks, he started six more games, and by mid-August, he had mixed success with a record of two and four as a starter, but he did have three starts in which he went seven or more innings while allowing two or less runs. And in his last 14 innings, covering his most recent two outings on July 30th, 1963 and August 9th, 1963, he had only two earned runs. The sports time traveler has to see this. This was enough for me to decide to travel back precisely 60 years to Chicago to see Dave DeBusher start against the Cleveland Indians on August 13th, 1963. The White Sox were in second place in the American League at 66 and 50 coming into the game, nine games behind the Yankees. The Indians were a solid middle of the pack team in fifth place in the American League. And now, today's article. Starting at power pitcher, Dave DeBusher. Chicago, August 14th, 1963. Last night, I went back in time exactly 60 years to experience one of my favorite basketball players of all time take the mound as the starting pitcher for the Chicago White Sox at Comiskey Park. It was a pleasant evening. Highs in the 60s at the old ballpark on Chicago's south side at 35th Street and Shields Avenue. Just under 18,000 fans were on hand when Dave DeBusher threw the first pitch a little after 8 p.m. Central Time to the Indians' Vic Davileo. DeBusher got Davileo to ground out to third, and he had a relatively easy inning after that, allowing just one single. In the second inning, DeBusher retired the side in order, and he did the same in the third. Through three innings, he had allowed just one hit and no runs. Meanwhile, the White Sox had manufactured one run on a sacrifice fly. White Sox won, Indians nothing, end of three innings. In the fourth inning, DeBusher ran into trouble. Three singles loaded the bases with two outs, but DeBusher got Max Alvis to ground out to get out of the jam and preserve his one nothing lead. In the fifth inning, DeBusher yielded two more singles and had runners on first and second with just one out, but again he got out of the inning when the next two batters flied out. In the bottom of the fifth, the White Sox padded the lead for DeBusher, scoring two runs. White Sox three, Indians nothing, end of five innings. Over the next three innings, DeBusher settled down. He let up a walk, but no other batter beat reached base. Going into the ninth inning, the score remained 3 to nothing White Sox. The first Indians batter in the ninth was catcher John Romano. He flied out to left. The second batter was right fielder Al Luplo. He popped up to short. With two outs, the next Indians batter to face Dave DeBusher was third baseman Max Alvis. The second-year player was having a solid year with 14 home runs, 42 RBIs, and he was batting 400 over his last five games. But on this night, DeBusher got him to go 0 for 4 as he flied out to left field to end the game. Dave DeBusher had completed a shutout. The popular DeBusher had a banner headline in all caps in the Chicago Tribune sports section today that read, DeBusher, comma, Sox beat Indians three to nothing. In addition, DeBusher got a headline on the front page of the Chicago Tribune as well. A small article on the bottom of column three had the heading in all caps, DeBusher shut out Indians three to nothing. Postscript from the Sports Time Traveler. 
there were no quotes in any newspapers from Dave DeBusher about his first Major League Baseball shutout. But the AP article on the game that ran in newspapers around the country started with this line. Dave DeBusher felt so tall today that he probably could rebound against Wilt Chamberlain. Little did they know that one of the biggest basketball plays of his career would come 10 years later when he wrested a rebound away from Wilt to ice the key game of the 1973 NBA Finals. I believe that Dave DeBusher is the only two-sport player ever to record a shutout in a Major League Baseball game. Thanks for reading, and I'd love to hear your comments. Bye-bye now.